Hey, what's up guys? Sean back with another video and we got Boogie2988. Now, I first had this guy come onto my radar. It had to be about seven years ago when I was laying there in bed. I had no idea what my own weight was and I was sit thinking to myself, man, this guy's got it all figured out. He's found out how to monetize being fat. Like this man is getting paid to be the funny fat guy online that everybody... Like, how the hell do I get a piece of that? I can do a damn cannonball. Like, I saw this guy flop in a pool. Millions of views. I was like, damn. How do I get a piece of that? But, uh, yeah, since then, it has been a drastically different story. I follow this guy quite a little bit. And I think he's really a cautionary tale on what not to do once you actually make it, like, on YouTube or something like that. So it should be pretty interesting to watch. When I'm on my deathbed, the biggest regret I, ha I will ever have is knowing that I had a job that every person in the world would fucking kill for. It's true. And I fucked it up. I'm going to be mad about that till I go to the fucking grave. I mean, you kind of would be. 917 million? That's a lot of damn cheddar. I've got like 13 million. I thought I was doing pretty good. What are we doing? We, I didn't know we were gonna start with some only fats material. Jesus. What in the world? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that is this is this guy's first ever video and it's like up over 300,000 now. That's why I thought it was worth a watch. But I'm going to put his like channel name down in the description. If it's put together well and it's doing this good, I think everybody should go follow him cuz it looks like he makes some pretty damn good documentaries from the look of this. Period of nine months, exclusive access. How did you get that, though? Like, he let you have all that? Uh, there was one girl. I don't know if I should talk about this, Mike, but I'm going to. There was one girl that I dated. She liked a lot of childish things. She liked rubber ducks. That's why I have some of these rubber ducks. And one of my Ew. Like, what the hell? Like, I'm not trying to kink shame people. But I had one of these crazy chicks message me online, too, and she was like, I suck more than a pacifier, and I was like, that's just weird. Like, I don't know how you get into that as a man, like. One of my favorite memories with her is us setting in this tub, her playing with rubber ducks as I, I washed her, and then I, when we got out, I took her to bed. One of the best nights of my life, Mike. It happened right here. That's the best night of your life. That sounds kind of depressing, buddy. I'm sorry. Yeah, so when it comes to financial approach, I don't fucking know what I'm doing. Money comes in, money goes out. For the longest time, my ex-wife handled that shit, but then I got divorced. I don't Get him, women. He's blaming you. It ain't me. He said his ex-wife. That's women. That's all on all of you guys. I don't know where my money is. I don't know what it's doing. The only thing I've ever done with it is I threw it into crypto and then lost a shitload of it. Well, here's everything. If you want to see, there's $2,758 in my bank. You know how many people are going to be mad that he's like, that's all, and people wish they had that in their bank account? Also, Logan Paul gets another one, buddy. That crypto zoo ain't hitting exactly the same. You should have got the Walrus Zebra damn one. That's probably worth all kinds of bucks. ...account right now, and let's see if mortgages come out yet. So tomorrow, when they take mortgage out, I'll have about $700 to live off of until the 20th when I get paid again from YouTube. So I'm just going to live off of $700, and I'll probably sell some cards along the way and use that money to make ends meet as well. I have a credit card with them that I owe $600 on. And on top of that, I still owe $163,000 on my house. I think my net worth is zero. Once you...
okay and you own a home and there's people that wish they did so instead of sitting here complaining about everything that's wrong in your life why don't you do something about it like you could budget and make that kind of money last you all month it's not going to be easy i mean it's not a lot of cheddar right but you could do something with that this guy is like a huge youtuber i'm sure he has tons of stuff laying around that's worth money pull the equity out of the house get rid of the house debt sell off all my collectibles and pay off all my debts i think that puts me at zero dollars shit it's not I'm negative <sighs> Yeah, this is the hard part. Back to reality. Oh. oh, yeah, I forgot that he had the bariatric surgery. Just because, like, you could see the loose skin on him. But I think he lost a good bit of weight for a while, and then he just started backtracking. But that's another reason I wanted to watch this. Because it's like, he went into the honeymoon stage. He did all right for a while. And then some people just go right back to eating how they used to. And I never could see myself doing that. Also, almost got stuck in a tub like that once. But it was a little more narrow. And uh, I would be careful with that one, buddy. Them duckies ain't going to get you out. Whew. Cute puppies. He doesn't have that much excess skin. It's still fat. Like, this is excess skin. That shit's got to... Look at that muscle, though. I'm working on that. But that's what's got to go. But, I mean, you, it's all perspective in life. you got to choose how you look at it. I have choose to look at that as a sign that, like, I worked hard, right? But my best feature... This is the one the ladies love. I call it... My meat apron. I have two meat curtains there's a second one don't i have two glorious oh fuck me fupa why did you do that nobody wants to see your short and curlies what are you doing damn that's hanging right over his too i used to call myself the fupa king i guess i gotta be the fupa prince this dude's got me beat by a mile this meat curtains I don't like showing it to people, and people don't like seeing it. So that's why I'm going to die alone. Well, my real name is Steve Williams. Uh, I'm known online as Boogie2988 because there's a lot of famous Steve Williamses, and I'm not one of them, right? Uh, I started a YouTube channel back in 2006, right at the very beginning. And I got famous for comedy sketches as well as like life vlogs and, and just sharing my personal life with other people. What's up? I was going to say, that's the like one thing that I knew him for back in the day, the Francis videos. I used to see them all over the, like all over YouTube. They were getting pushed pretty hard. But since then, he definitely, he's definitely skinnier than he was. But he could have lost a lot more. The bariatric surgery is really a gift. And if you don't take advantage of it, you're messing up. Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie to 988 coming at you. My right. ankle on my left leg and head. Um, but that's just the kind of woman I married. So give her some love in the comments section. Give her Damn. Because I used to make. And it's not exactly enough to make ends meet. Just this is where I spend six to eight hours a day trying to figure out how to save my career. What's up? Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, we're going to 988 kind of show levels get to the power of the internet. And today, let's talk a little bit about why you got to do better than I did, right? I've told I think a lot of people would kill to make that just sitting there making videos. Because 17,000, like, I don't know, I put out a video that I don't think is going to do well, and it usually does about 14,000. But that's a lot of money to still have coming in, right? A lot of people would be happy with that. It wouldn't be so damn negative. I told the audience, I told you guys, I told everybody, this is the center of my world, right here. That in this is this recliner, good. with my dogs, watching television, playing video games on that television. But the other day, <laughs> the audio on this TV started to go out. And whenever it would make like S sounds, it would crackle. And so, I know I'm budgeting, but I immediately went to Amazon and bought a sound bar for a hundred bucks.
what are you doing? Like, I had a TV that did that. I just changed the setting to, like, vocal. You can change the, like, sound amplifications or whatever. You could make that crackling go away. That's what I did. I still use that thing for, like, two damn years. Then the next day, the TV stopped crackling. And now I have a $100 sound bar that I don't need. But I know I'm supposed to be budgeting right now. But because that's my TV, because that's my only source of entertainment, because it's the only thing I do, it's one of the only things that bring me peace. Like, I'm like, I have to be able to hear my fucking TV. You ever had the people pull up to you in the parking lot and be like, man, I just did this job at this place. I'm selling this home audio entertainment system because that's happened to me like three different times. I don't know if I just give off this nice guy friendly energy or something, but people really need to stop trying to sell me shit in parking lots. But that's every addict, right? Like Mitch Hedberg said, I'll just do enough heroin. And then he like, oh, I had heroin, that. Right? So Not heroin. Addict... Not heroin. Pokemon Monopoly. I had Pokemon Monopoly. It tries to manage the addiction, but I don't know, man. We were talking about compulsive spending a minute ago. Yeah. Dude, I spent a lot of stuff on a lot of money on stuff. You know where a lot of the money went? Horse. And like it felt really compulsive at the time. Oops, sorry. Oh my god. You spent that kind of money on getting your fupa frosted? Good lord. Buddy. What are you doing? I am a former sex worker escort and Boogie2988 was one of my clients. I'm from LA and I get a message on this website, you can probably guess which one, from this guy who looked a lot like Boogie. I took women on vacations and I took them out to fancy dinners and I took them to like Disneyland and shit. He bought me dinner, he got me a purse that we were talking What's up with you and taking people like rubber duckies? You're taking them to Disney? Are you looking for a daughter or like a girlfriend? I get Disney's fun for everybody, but that's just kind of weird that you're like, oh, you want to go ride the teacups with me? And then later, I'm not even going to go any further with that thought. Talking about over messages and he got me a couple gift cards and he spent well over 5,000 on just that night. You know the rules. The rules are we're going to go out and eat. We're going to have dinner. Maybe we're going to fuck and you're going to enjoy a nice lifestyle that you don't normally get to enjoy. I bet you wish you could have that money back right now. Oh my god, you're crying over a hundred dollar soundbar and you spent five thousand dollars in a night on getting your noodle wet? You're out of your damn mind. So he was really funny and definitely tell he was nervous. Um, he did eat a lot of food. I'm pretty sure he got two entrees, which was very unique. <laughs> It's not Sounds a revelation. Like I like beautiful women. I like to hang out with beautiful women. Fuck beautiful women. We all do. I never got to do that. The women I dated were pretty, sure. But they were like Arkansas eights, <laughs> not LA 10. I know you are not shaming an Arkansas eight while you're sitting there showing us your meat curtain. Dude, that's insane that you would take a shot at anybody's looks. You just need to find somebody whose personality, like, could get along with you. You're so focused on, like, just the attraction. Like, there has to be lust, sure. But you're so focused on, like, I need the dime piece, I'm making money, that that's where your damn downfall probably started. Tins with sugaring, I got to fuck some LA tins, and I think that's cool. We got back to the hotel, and I do regret to say that I slept with Boogie 2988. Overall, the experience, and I don't mean to fat shame or anything, but there was rolls upon rolls upon rolls, and it took me a lot of time to find a stick. Careful. <laughs> I am now married with two kids, and sleeping with Boogie is one of the reasons I quit sex work. Is it Boogie's kid? Because that would be a hell of a plot twist, right? Is that it's sexist cheap. to me? Sure. Is that womanizing me? Sure, I don't really care. Um, I'm a 48 year old man. I never got to fuck a model. This let me fuck a couple of models. Is that wrong? 
the wrong part is paying for it. Like, I don't know why, but the, when I started this channel, I was getting messages from all kinds of OF girls on here, just like, sign up to my, I ain't never paid for that in my damn life, and I never will. Why? Why? It's free. Here we have some of the women in this area that are local and ready to go out. They'll go to dinner with you, they'll go to a show with you, maybe they'll come back to your place, but they are expecting something in exchange. Uh, but then it's... I wonder how much action you can get for a soundbar, buddy. You got one of those that's not in use. It's window shopping, right? Like any other meat market like Tinder, you kind She's of pretty. scroll down the, the list of photos until you find someone that looks interesting to you. I think interesting to you it's all boob shots like you couldn't even see the girl's face what if she showed up and she was in Arkansas 6 like you say it I think this girl's really cute oh yeah yeah she's definitely a little thicker than I necessarily would always go for but there's nothing wrong with that so I deserve to go to do you have the nerve to call her thick like, I mean, she's a little more than regular, but I don't, I, I don't call people thick usually. I don't call people fat either. I don't think I've earned that privilege. Disneyland with a beautiful girl, right? I deserve to go to, to New York and explore Times Square with a beautiful girl, right? Like, I deserve that, and I want that, and I've never had it. Man, if I had that money back, that would be half of my mortgage right now. That $1,000 is my entire health insurance payment. I don't know what the prostitutes did with it, and I hope they spent it in, in good health. Uh, but I sure could use that shit right now. They probably bought Pokemon cards, so you just got screwed all kinds of way, buddy. You could add all kinds of new, like, cardboard. You know? What, you want to go for a walk? So you can, he knows. He know, you can't tell me he doesn't know. <laughs> They're cute, Leo, man. Uh, baby, I know. We'll go in a second. I gotta prep your brother. He's great. He's actually, I, I actually really love him a lot. Leo! I know how much these things mean to you. What's it like to have to sell them to be able to live? So selling off these things kind of sucks because I've been playing Magic for 30 years and some of the cards in this box I opened back in 1994. I opened them in like 96 and I've held on to them ever since. And that's a, like their. Buddy, sell your magic cards or live at the mission. Like, which is it? Material possessions can always be bought back. But it's like, if you're trying just to survive, who gives a shit about the latest action figure? I saw all kinds of plastic there that could be sold. A piece of my childhood, they're a piece of my history. I thought I was going to get buried with this stuff. This was, this is my stuff. This is me. This is part of me. And uh, I made some money off of YouTube last month, but I did not make enough without a sponsor or something like that. I just, I'm not making enough. So we're going to go to the game shop, but this is going to keep me from going out on the, uh, on the streets, right? Like this is going to keep me in a house. So I think, I think it's bittersweet. I think he would find it bittersweet. He would have wished I'd bankrupt in six months. I'm selling. And you're worried about like all this stupid shit. Start selling. You got six months. Get your ass in gear, dude. Magic cards on whatnot. I'm selling collectibles on eBay. I'm selling arcade machines locally. I'll sell it all. And I'm going to sell enough to help with mortgage. But I'm also going to sell enough to be able to play Magic tonight because I don't want people wondering why I'm not there. I don't want people like knowing I'm broke. Like that's embarrassing. I can't afford thirty dollars to play Magic, so I'm spending thirty bucks to play Magic tonight. Buddy, the whole world knows you're broke. You're sitting there e-begging online, and give me money. I need money. Like that's his Francis voice or whatever. But yeah, no, you you can't don't have thirty bucks to blow right now. That might be the difference between you eating one day or not. Well, I don't know. probably about one day. I don't know. I don't know what he's eating yet. If he's still eating good. Okay, so this month I need from you about $1,000 to make mortgage. So I need you to pick out like $1,000 for the stuff. Like there's a couple of cradles in there. There's a city of traders in there. 
Well, I can do 200 a piece on those. What? Dude, I thought we were looking more like 400, 450 on each of these. 175 is what it's down to. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Those Good took Lord, time. that took a beating. Bro, you don't have time to complain about what it's down to. You got six months. Like, hop two. Fuck, these are reserved list cards, Glenn. Yeah? They're not going anywhere but up. Okay. Well, you say that, but the dual lands went down. He's so happy. I mean, yeah, all right. As long as I'm getting mortgage money, as long as I'm getting some cards every night, okay. You, you, do you, you gave me these back. Mm -hmm. You want to sell them until I come back in here because I'm not going to sell them to anybody else but you. Okay. Two, no, make it three chicken quesadillas. What's paying for this? Magic. Shit, you're paying me back on <laughs> I can't believe that you're sitting here like, I ain't got $30 to spend, but you just pull up the Taco Bell and spend about 20 right there. I used to go crazy on them Baja Blast and Quesadillas, though. They're friggin' good, but you ain't got it to do right now. Don't hurt. Yeah, Damn, we all look cheap the in same Arkansas. in a game shop. It's because we're fucking outcasts. We're in a kind of small town. We're fucking autistic as shit. We're awkward around women. We're awkward around people. We don't know what the fuck we're doing. And then I come back here and I'm looking at all the shit I need to sell. And I'm surrounded by all the shit that I bought for YouTube videos and stuff. And it's hard to not think about what a fuck up I am. But that's why I go to the arcade. That's why I go to play Magic. That's why I have my friends over. Because for just a few hours, I'm not that fuck up from YouTube. I'm just Steve Williams. I'm just me. This guy is sucking the soul out of me right now. Like, I'm trying to be positive about something, but he is just so negative about everything. Oh, this is, this is my Saturday night crew. We get together every Saturday. We eat pizza, we play magic, we play board games, we do Smash Brothers. <laughs> magic the Gathering, this is my crack, this is my cocaine. I met him at the magic shop. I met him in the magic shop. Now him, I met. You really don't have to tell me where you met these people at, because I already figured that out before you even said it. Out of the magic shop. This guy I met at the magic shop. This guy I met uh, at the Sugar magic babies. shop. Sugar babies. This guy I met because he was a roommate with a friend I met at the magic shop. Okay, so I have a million dollar question for you guys. Every Saturday we get together. Mm -hmm. Every Saturday I order what? Pizza, chicken fingers, tacos. Those are the things I normally get us, right? Like, I normally spend like $100, $150 every Saturday to like feed us. And like, I showed them my bank books today and I'm not like, I've never wanted to burden you guys with this, but like, I'm at a point where saving $300 a month would be useful. I mean, we've been doing it. Bro, $150 just to feed them? They'd eat their damn deck before I'd be paying that kind of money. You didn't make nobody else chip in? What the hell are you doing? Telling you for years that we don't care about the food that much. Okay. Yeah. Like, don't like, don't get me wrong. I like having snacks and soda when I'm over here because I don't eat those at my house. Right. But we've, I mean, we definitely said it throughout the years. Like, you don't have I, to feed us, but know, you you, you do it anyway. So when are we gonna start bringing girlfriends around? When you get another thousand dollars, also, when's the last time that guy showered, man? His hair is so greasy. Some people's is naturally greasy, but I mean, I, I guess I can't really talk. Mine probably looked like shit too back in the day. Also, when are we gonna start bringing girlfriends around that aren't hookers? Because <laughs> that's all I've brought around for five years. I mean, like, we haven't that's had like legitimate girlfriends over in a long time. You haven't dated in, in a while. You haven't dated in a while. I mean, yeah, a while out. That's fair enough, yeah. I mean, you've, you've like had some, I think you've had like a I think he's a good guy, yeah. I think that Boogie's definitely a, a good guy. Uh, he loves his friends and his family and he cares about people a lot and he cares about what people think about him a lot. He's a fun person to be around and to laugh and make jokes with. And sometimes we open up and we have like really personal conversations and I enjoy getting to know. Somebody found the money for that damn pizza. I hope it wasn't you. You ain't got it him in that way as well willing to do things for us he's offered to you know take care of us or 
offered us a room if he needs it. Um, he's still going to make some of the same jokes. You know, we all have a sort of dry sense of humor. Sincere kindness. Uh, it's, it doesn't always show up, but... Uh, he, he does have a lot of a lot of compassion for people. That... I think he's just a guy <laughs> with good and bad, but I don't think he's as bad as. They pick her up. I thought they didn't have any girlfriends. One of them must have invested. Oh no, I don't think I could say that. <laughs> a lot of corners of the internet think he is. I think as long as he stops tweeting the N word, he'll be fine. <laughs> he did that. The N word is just a word. If. You guys left, and these cameras weren't rolling, and I was sitting here alone in the dark, and- Oh shit, I don't have enough melanin to have a call on this one. Oh no, you really said this. You're an idiot. Why would you go online and start saying- Why would you say it in your free time anyway? That's pretty gross as is. And I said the N-word. There's no magic power to it. So say it. Oh, no, I'm not going to say it on camera where it could hurt somebody. I like offensive humor. I like dark jokes. I say fucked up shit. I think the darker something is, cancer, rape, murder, child abuse, the darker it is, the more important it is to make jokes about it. I think I get what he's trying to get at. I think he's trying to say, like, humor helps you with the dark things, which humor definitely helps me with, like, the tough things in life. But there's just some things that you really don't have any business joking about because it's not a joke. It's very serious. I can't believe that he thinks that would be a good take on anything. Yeah. I feel, I'm sorry you had to go through that, bro. Yeah, that's okay. All right. I mean, I didn't go through it. I'm still alive. She's dead. And, uh, yep, yeah, so fuck her. And now she's dead. That's a lot of money, I guess, for a person of color, or is it not? I don't know. Someone says you can't put your finger into a clitoris. Somebody here doesn't have a scalpel handy. You splay that fucker just right, you can wrap it all around your fingers. You just gotta, you gotta shave real thin. Woo, that's disturbing. That's the most fucked up thing. I've no, I plan to shoot you, bud. Buddy. Oh my God. You are, there's no saving you at this point. When I started this, I thought maybe we could save this guy. But his brand of offensive humor doesn't even really sound all that funny. Like, I think some of the stuff I say might be offensive. But I'm not talking about going over your flip, flap, flapjack, like cut up some. No. You pointing a gun at me? Yes. Is this what we have to do? Where it really went south is when one guy spent like a month of his time gathering every link, every video clip, everything I'd ever said or done since 1998, and he compiled it into this one huge mega thread. It's like 10, 15 pages long. And every time my name would get mentioned on Reddit moving forward, they would all link to that mega thread. Well, these people on Reddit began to bombard my sponsors to make Bro, you are forever the victim. That's all, like, you're not taking any kind of accountability. And that's the problem with the most people we watch on My 600 Pound Life. No accountability. Meanwhile, you got me sitting here saying, yeah, I did all this shit to myself. Like, I take full accountability for what I let myself become. You, there is nothing that you have done that's your fault yet. Make me look as bad as possible. Every time I got a new sponsor, they would bombard me. And, uh... Eventually they drop me. Yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready to step back into 1988? You ready to go back to my childhood? Because that's what's behind the star. We ain't got five dollars to blow. You just bought three damn quesadillas. You could add three nights here for that. Do you want to know what this represents to me? This is everything that was good about my childhood. And when I walk back in here, it's like going back in time, except things aren't completely shitty. So this is the classic. I mean, I even have a Pac-Man tattoo. This is the game I most identify with because it's about a little round guy running through a maze, trying to figure shit out, eating everything in sight, and getting chased by ghosts of his past.
That's not a bad joke, but I used to play that game with my mom all the time. Something about them chasing me around gave me friggin' anxiety. I never liked Pac-Man, but my mom could kick my ass at it when I was a kid. So I'm basically Pac-Man. I know, it's simple fun. And, uh, I mean, look at the guy. He looks like me. Uh, I, I might have sprained it or broken it or something. I was walking to the bathroom in there, and... There was a loud snap sound, and things kind of shifted in one direction. And now my foot is swelling into my shoe, and it hurts. What kind of calisthenics were you doing at the urinal to do that? Like, that's impressive. You could hurt yourself anywhere if you hurt yourself taking it, like a leak or whatever. It hurts really badly. It's the fun part about being old and fat. You never know. You don't know if you'll wake up tomorrow. You don't know if today is that stroke or heart attack you've been waiting on, or if it's gonna be a healthy day and you feel real good for a change. You never know. He died? So I don't know. It could fucking be today. Do I think I'll make 50? Yeah, probably. That's only two years away. Do I think I'll make 60? which is 12 years away? Probably not. 50 is a pretty good run for somebody that got up close to 600 pounds. That's why I always say you're playing tag with the Grim Reaper and you just sprained your ankle in a bathroom. So you ain't winning that race, buddy. Here's everything that's wrong with Boogie. Low testosterone, testicular hypogonadism, sleep apnea, what does that mean? Because it sounds like, no, nah, gonadism. It's his balls. Hypo? Is hypo bigger? I forget, man. Because if it's bigger, I don't know. I mean, a hypo gonad me, I don't know. Swelling due to blockages of lymphatic flow. Seboric eczema, chronic back pain. Protein in urine. That's from kidney damage, folks. That is everything keeping me alive. We have... Losartan, tramadol, buprofen, sertraline. Uh, did I, I deal with back pain? I deal with nightmares? I'm always tired. I don't know the last time I did sleep. Otherwise, if I don't wear this machine at night, when I'm supposed to be sleeping, I'm actually drowning in my own fat. Uh, hi I've got one of those, but I couldn't deal with the nose one. But my story's even funnier. <clears throat> Sorry. Because I had to go to this building in the middle of Hagerstown, Maryland and do a sleep study so they could figure it out and I couldn't sleep. So what did my stupid self do? Took a bunch of sleeping medicine, zonked the hell out, and then they gave me one of those that's like a damn jetpack, man, because they thought I was like legally like gone for. So that thing blows like 30 mile an hour wind and it shoots off my face so I got a tight, I never could use it. It was cranked up to a thousand. Thanks, Nyquil. High blood pressure, history of gastric bypass, intestinal malabsorption vitamin d sufficiency because like most gamers i hate the sun morbid obesity major depressive disorder major anxiety disorder history of to be fair that lady that you paid said you had a vitamin d sufficiency too insufficiency diabetes mellitus blood pooling in veins varicose veins of the legs with complications Degeneration of lumbar or lumbosacral intervertebral disc. That means my back don't work so good. History of basal cell carcinoma. That's cancer. And of course, I can't breathe so good. So asthma and allergies as well. So it's a waiting game now. And it's just about making the best of it. You enjoy what you got when you got it. Sometimes that's a chicken quesadilla. Those quesadillas are good, but I don't think that they're like, I just lost a million dollars good. But man, you're just so negative. Life's a battle of perspectives. Like if you sit there and you're not cheering on your own self or your own biggest fan and you're just sitting there like kind of wallowing in all the things that are wrong, you're never going to get anywhere with that kind of attitude. 
You have to pick yourself up. Nobody is going to do it for you. Like, you can't just sit there and say, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. Somebody save me. You've got to save yourself. Halfway. Thank God. I wanted to make like a documentary that was generally entertaining. You realize, wait a second, everything he says is depressing. Everything he says is like the saddest shit I've ever heard. That would be half of my mortgage right now. No kidding, but this documentary is still very well done, even if it's really negative. So I would highly recommend subscribing to this guy. I am. And it's just about making the best of it. This is the first documentary we're, I'm doing. I can't put out a documentary that's this guy the whole time. Because I don't want my brand new channel uh, to be known as making documentaries about the most depressing people that exist. It's just like... You want to get a happy 600 pounder? Because I got you, buddy. I'm on the come up right now. We're, we're going up. Boogie's on his way down. So you could join my train. You could hitch on to me, buddy. We could make a fun one. I I'm a lot more fun than this guy. What the fuck happened to this guy? What the fuck happened to Boogie? Hypogonadism? Well, he's losing what made people originally like him. It, it could be as simple as just that positive attitude. Why not use your only life to make the lives around you better? Fuck you. It's none of your fucking business. It's my body. It's my choice. Eat shit. And over time, in the content, we see this shift where he starts to become more interested in money. I just like making content. I just like talking to a camera. I just like doing cool stuff. I just want ad revenue. I just want YouTube to pay me a fair amount. It's all I've ever wanted, right? And his concerns about to be fair, that switch happens in a lot of YouTubers. I could never see that happening to myself. I really enjoy talking to you guys. You guys support me. My channel keeps growing because you guys click like, you guys comment. Some of you just comment good morning and you had no idea how much of a blessing something like that is because it makes your channel grow. That kind of stuff helps your videos get pushed out and it just does a, like, it makes a world of difference. There was one girl, even when I had like 100 subs, her name was Florida Girl, she would comment every single day and it would say, just helping you with the algorithm. Like, that's unbelievably nice. Money. If I could teach you anything, it's to hold on to the money you get. Oh, are you trying to manipulate people into giving you money? The answer is yes. Give me some money. And more interested in complaining. I couldn't be more grateful. I couldn't be more grateful to people. Want to comment? Thank you. I'm a walking embarrassment, dude. We do. Look at me. I'm fucking disgusting. Better, I'm a piece of shit. I will never function the way you function. It's not possible. Um, that's why. The crazy thing is, like, asking people for money whenever you're that big of a subscriber, like, a channel or whatever, is insane. Like, I was, like, a 10,000 sub channel, right? Not making that much off of YouTube. And I'm literally telling you, if you have money to give, do not give it to me. Give it to a nice charity. I donate to St. Jude every month. Like, that's my cause that I choose, and it's just because that one seems worthy to me. The Ronald McDonald one's a good one, too. I forget the exact name. Is it a Ronald McDonald house, something like that? That's another good one. There's all kinds of good charities out there. I, if you're griping to your viewers, if you're complaining to your subscribers, I mean, that just leaves a sour taste in people's mouths. I think my window's closing. And if it's not closing already, it's it's already closed. Right, so if there was money to be made and... You're not fitting out the damn window anyway. You didn't keep going with the bariatric surgery. Making people feel depressed. I think Boogie would be in the right business. Like, that's just my life philosophy at this point. Just face down in the mud. That's, that's pretty face much how we live our lives. Man. Keemstar's in this one. That, that's right around the corner. Like, I have to sell this place. I have to, I have to tap into the equity to survive. Like, that's the last of my money. And... 
hear me out, okay? With the escorts, could we consider that a medical treatment because he has hypogonads? Like, could that be considered like dr draining the hypogonads? I'm saying this sounds like a med. We could have probably wrote that off somehow. That's 200 grand back in the bank. Here, hear me out. I think we could finesse this one. So much of that money is going to doctor's appointments and tests and all of that is just to fucking stay alive. Fuck. I will never listen to a guy complain about bills that is going out to eat every single day who is buying $300 in like take out for his friends in a month or who is sitting here buying a sound bar when they're budgeting on seven hundred dollars your opinion immediately gets thrown out all your sorrow like sorrow you could have budgeted better you could have spent your money better like you had money don't invest in the things and don't just sit there and blow money that you don't have anymore you got used to having it and now you don't know how to live without it anymore when you were poor to start because i think you started out in a trailer park there are plenty of different content creators to have various mental illnesses all over social media. And some just say, it is what it is, and this is what I'm gonna do. Boogie tends to be really obsessed with this idea that it's favorable to have people feel sorry for you, and that kind of victim uh, mentality where you can get further in life if uh, people have compassion on you, regardless of the reason they're doing it. I look awful. It's not true. I mean, you can only be the victim for so long before somebody says, so when are you going to fight back? When are you going to slay your own dragons? Like, mental illness is very serious. I know that this guy's probably been through hell in his, his life. Like, he probably got dealt a bad hand, right? Like, his cards were dealt, and they were pretty damn bad from the start. He turned it all around. He had it all. Like, this guy had what most people would freaking kill for. But then you just sat there, and at some point... It wasn't enough. You needed everybody's sympathy. You needed everybody to, like, worship you and be sorry for you. And that just doesn't do it, man. People get sick of that quick. If I look like I've been through hell over the last couple of days, it's because I have been. Most notably, I've ruined my body. Like Jerry, I ruined my own career. Maybe it was the imposter syndrome. Maybe it's because I... It's been a, a method of... I, I think covert narcissism is the right phrase. Like, oh, look at how pathetic I am. I learned about a narcopath the other day. That's a crazy combination. But also, what the hell is imposter syndrome? Is this guy just playing too much among us or something? You should feel sorry for me. You would never be mean to me because I'm they so do pathetic, this right? Oh, I'm so fat, I'm so well. weird, I'm so goofy, I'm such an old man. I'm so, I'm such a... I grew up in an abusive family and an abusive home. The amount of pain that's in my head and my heart is... is so vulnerable crazy. narcissism has a number of characteristics. Uh, a person can be considered a vulnerable narcissist without having them all. So with vulnerable narcissism or covert narcissism, we see pessimism. I feel defeated and confused and lost all the time, every day. Hypersensitivity to criticism. Buy a map. That's all I got for you. Spend some of that Taco Bell money. I can't handle this kind of hate. I can't handle these types of attacks. I can't do it. Reactive anger, so they're not really thinking things through. Is this what I have to do? <laughs> and so he goes by Boogie 2988 was booked into the jail this morning. Need for admiration. Can I get a round of applause? The self-centeredness. I'm the perfect victim. I have been victimized my entire life. The sense of entitlement. If you guys want to help me pay for my Tesla, please go ahead and dig deep. I sure would like a free fucking Tesla. Leaving oneself to be special. How many kids went on to get 4.5 million YouTube subscribers. One. Not you either, buddy, because that shit's out the window. But yeah, sitting there and saying like all the time, like, I'm so awesome. I'm this and that. I say it. I'm joking, man. I don't, I'm not that full of myself. You are sounding very like down on yourself, full of yourself, so manipulative. Like everything you say, it, there's like some purpose behind it or to invoke some emotion out of somebody else. And that was your downfall, man. When are you going to start owning up to your own crap? Like, 
even during this documentary, this had to be your idea. Like, I'll save my career. This guy will make a documentary on me. People will feel sorry for me. They'll start giving me money. Like, that's just not going to work out. Steven uh, Williams! You're just watching the same things over and over again. What's up? Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie, Boogie Tiny, Tiny Eight, Eight Jaws, and the power of the oh, internet. Man. This is my family series. My family series. This is 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 my family to get his viewers back. I don't think he's getting his viewers back. I don't think that's a possibility. I think the only thing to do now is go a different angle. But I think he could switch it up and he could be like, look, I know I effed up, but I'm trying to turn it all around. Like, I want to get back on the right path. I'll stop eating quesadillas every damn day. I'm going to work out. I'm going to do this or that. I think people would genuinely try to support him in, like, bettering himself. But as long as he's sitting there and saying, like, I just can't, like, I'm the lowest of the low, and all that can't, 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 nobody's going to root for you. That just means that you're going to sit there and everybody's going to say, oh, there goes that guy, can't do shit. Like, he won't even try. That's the problem. But I don't even know if that's possible. I mean, it, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but... How do you change yourself? Like, viewers are smart. Like, they want to see you. They want to see what you're interested in. I don't know. You got to get a job. Maybe in this case, GameStop. I don't think GameStop pays very much, but he could definitely be an Uber driver instead of just sitting home and complaining that he has no money. Like, that's a pretty easy job. You sit there and drive. I mean, you got to deal with all kinds of other headaches from people and stuff or psychopaths that won't get out of your car. Sometimes I watch them on YouTube. That's freaking great. Where's the Tesla? Nice to meet you. My name is Dawn. Dawn, I'm Boogie or Steve. Okay, uh, yeah. what do you prefer to be called? Honestly, by? probably Steve. Steve. Let's go with Steve. Okay, Steve. No problem. Whatever you prefer. And so you are here today. I actually kind of like her sweater. I like the color patterns that go together. I designed my own shoes today because it's so hard for me to buy shoes. And I kind of went with those like neutral, like tan colors, but I also had like baby blue, blue. Uh, it's hard to get a size 15 in store, man. Because you are seeking employment yeah you're seeking out new work opportunities absolutely tell me a little bit about your background and where you think you want to go with the experience that you already have um i did work at a small gaming store back in 2006 2007 i am disabled okay. uh recognized by the state of arkansas but also the united states government there's that now the, the downside to that is i am extremely depressed so there's some mental Okay, we started off okay, and then we just went all downhill. Why didn't we just start off with, I have a crippling hooker ad like obsession or whatever. Like, come on, dude. What are you doing? You're not... He really thought... No, he didn't want the job. There's no reason for you to come in like that, unless he didn't want this to go well. Health issues that we bring to the table. And then physically, uh, I, I am morbidly obese. I have no references, uh, no work history and no education, and when you Google my name, you might see rumors that I beat my ex-wife, and I am also a, should mention I'm also a felon. Okay. Screw it, in for a penny, in for a pound. Tell her about the gonads, buddy. We're going all the way deep in this thing. Uh. What's the nature of your felony? Aggravated assault. How old is it? About two years. Okay. So I think there are some avenues you could explore. I definitely don't think it's impossible, but you have some challenges. Yeah. Lots of things in life are about your mindset and Brew. you're using weight and disability. I can't, I can't, I can't. If that is the attitude that you're going to have when you approach everything, then you can't and you won't. I like you, lady. You got, you got it all figured out. So she knew right off the bat. She, it didn't take her very long to catch on to his shtick at all. 
I did work in the porn industry for well, a good someone part seven it. years. So, well, I mean. Be real with me. Do you really think it would be a good idea to go to a real interview and reference porn? It depended on the job, I would think. Like, at a strip club, maybe. But probably not in a more professional setting, I would say. Yes, I would yeah. say that. I was actually thinking the same thing, but I, I don't want to think the same thing as this guy. Uh, what would you think his chances are here of getting employment in the next three months? I'm not sure when it comes to the felony. We would have to seek cor corporate approval for that sort of charge in order to proceed forward with a candidate. And they would ultimately be the ones to make the decision as to whether or not we would feel comfortable presenting someone like that to our clients. Granted, no matter how bad like it is that this guy's playing the victim, I don't think there's any reason that that guy should have went to his house and been kind of harassing him. I could see why he felt kind of threatened, but pulling out a gun to defend yourself in a home and walking out front and just shooting in the air and city limits are two totally different things. I do remember hearing about that. Violent felonies, violent crimes, or sexual crimes. Um, have to be hey, Mike. Uh, listen, dude. I know we're making this documentary and everything, and I know you think I need to get a real job, but I just want to let you know I'm not going to. I I'm not going to walk into some job when I have four million subscribers on YouTube. I'm one of the original YouTubers, but I'm going. Okay, buddy, let this sink in because I hope to God that for some reason you are watching my video right now and getting my critique of you as somebody who weighed more than you because you have 4 million subscribers. I have 64,000. I get more views than you on my worst video in the month because mine start out at like 14K a day. It said you couldn't get 17K in a day. That should tell you something about what you're doing here. And nobody wants to hear you be the victim anymore. They want, to see, they want to hear you pick yourself up by your bootstraps and do something about it, man. Nobody wants you to sit here. No one's going to support you with that kind of mentality. What I'm going to do instead is go back to making content, go back to telling stories and entertaining people and making money doing it. And you want to check back with me in a couple of months? Let's see how things are going. All right? We'll talk to you then. Go lay down. Go lay down. Go lay down. Good job. Yeah, so I mean, things aren't great. Um, people are still mad at me on YouTube. Uh, my view numbers are pretty much close to zero. I'm having trouble breaking 10K on an upload right now. And uh, uh, not, not everything is bad. I've got at least one good thing going on. Can I show you? What preschool did you pick her up from? Didn't you just say you did some... Ew. How did this work out? You found you a meat curtain mama or whatever? Or what do you call it? He called it a meat flap. Meat curtain something different. I, ain't, I probably shouldn't have said that. So this is, uh, this is Desi. You can call her Des. Desiree. Yep, Desiree. And we've been dating now for months. A couple months, yeah. Yeah. Something about the thought of being 29 when you're born just creeps me all the hell the way out. Like, it, it's just, that's that's too big an age gap for me. I, hopefully this is something genuine for you because you need some positive. But I, I just can't go. When it comes to that kind of difference, what are we going to talk about? I just, I don't know what it was. It was, I guess it's his energy, his, his curly hair, his glasses. I'm, I must be into nerds. It's, I guess, I don't know. He's just adorable to me. I like him. He was going to... I'm a little confused on the energy part, and I saw it short and curly. He showed me him earlier, but if that's what you're into. Through a lot, and I randomly hit him up on Instagram, and I... Told him that I, you know, I support him and that I'm always here for him and stuff. And so it, it started from there. On paper, it just doesn't really add up, right? It doesn't make sense on paper, but then practice and the reality, there was just something there. 
so it was pretty crazy, but I just felt it. I felt, I felt an energy connection to him before I even met him, and I don't know, that's just, that's just how it is. And then the longer we spent talking, I don't know, eventually you just realize we're the same person, doing the same thing, living the same lives, just at different stages, and... I can see myself getting married to Boogie. I could definitely, I could definitely see us getting married. In fact, oh sweetie, you must think that this thing's still gonna really turn around. Like I'm happy for him, but there's, I don't. Maybe I'm jaded, but I'm trying to figure out what's in this for her. Like, is she an OF girl? Cause walking around in those shorts, I could see attaching yourself to a four million sub channel would definitely bring in some money somehow. But I don't know. I don't. I don't know if she is or not, and I'm not gonna go look for it. Because I am a good Christian boy, thank you. I, we may or may not have talked about it a little bit, and we may or may not sit around fantasizing about it and thinking about what it's going to look like. And and I called you wifey the other day, and you loved it. You were yeah. so there for it. If I proposed right now on camera, what would you do? I'd say yes. That's a good sign. That girl called like women wifey in middle school. I just, I, you can't be 50 and wi wifey. Uh, it, I don't, maybe, maybe some people still do it. It's just, I, I grew out of that a long time ago. Boogie has improved my life tremendously. He just makes me happy, the happiest I've ever been. And I'm not alone, and so that he just completes me. Growing up without a father figure has its challenges. Like you just don't have that, that, that support system that you would and the advice that you need. And so it's just difficult. I don't ever want to be alone. That's another thing. I'm just, I just, maybe that's why I have stuffed animals. I just, I don't ever want to be alone. And so it's just nice to have company. And I help with the dog. Damn, you got up in there quick, huh? But also, like, she definitely had her challenges growing up, too. So maybe they're kind of like trauma bonding or something like that. Because Boogie has told us a lot about his trauma. Yours doesn't sound like it was nearly as traumatic as his. But maybe this is something genuine. Maybe these two actually have something going on here. I get him, I get him his water. I, you know, like, whatever he wants and requests, you know. I, I just mainly is to take care of him. He takes care of me, so. Does he burp yeah, sometimes you? I, I pick weeds out here. So, cause like, it makes it look better. I'm trying to trim down these vines, but I'm not doing a good job. I don't do this very much. You know, I used to have a theory, Mike, that if you are a 40 year old man and you have a Snapchat, that means you're a creepy dude. Never owned a Snapchat. Never had one because I thought that they were just for sending nudes. Like, I thought that was the only thing Snapchat was for. Turns out my theory was right. I have a Snapchat and I am a creepy dude. Caught ya. I found that person and they happened to be 20. And I get that it's creepy to date somebody half your age or younger, but people can call me creepy if they want. If she's happy, and I'm happy, then I will be the biggest creep you need me to be as long as her and I are happy. You can be as mad as you want. Sexually. Ew, it would have been a little more creepy if she was like 18, but another friggin' YouTube gamer would, got, would get caught doing something like that. Like how many friggin' Minecraft guys have gone down for that one? We both seem to be having an excellent Time. I would say that it's the best I ever had. What? You were so... not mentally prepared for this kind of imagery this is a downfall video somebody better be marketing this thing this got over 300,000 views buddy if somebody didn't start an OF we're missing out 
Oh, bad call. A little off today. My, uh, I had a friend tell me I looked like a, a samurai on vacation. <laughs> you went out and spent over $70 to go to this show when you only had 300 in the bank? I'd be taking your ass to the Dollar Tree like you can get your favorite Stars and Stripes soda like I'm going all out today. But 70 bucks when you got 300? That's dumb. You, oh, you are so bad with your finances. It's not even funny. I was going to ask if you could see it, but. <laughs> <laughs> in the front here, and I think, did you, what are you, a YouTuber or something? Yeah, yeah, I've been uh, on YouTube for about 17 years. You've been on YouTube for 17 years? Yeah, four million subscribers. Okay, and this is your, my, my girlfriend. your girlfriend, who is much younger than you, is suspiciously. <laughs> She, that, you know, it's never good when you say, well, she's an adult. Is, he, is this a sex trafficking situation? Did you see how she looked at him like, can I laugh about this? Because she knew that later he would have just been so upset and cried about all his trauma and how people laughing at him triggers this and that. But man, I, I can't see, even if this is a genuine connection, I cannot see anybody putting up with that for more than a year without being absolutely burned out with everything having to be about the other person's just traumatic past or this is wrong, that is wrong. No positivity in life. I can't see it lasting. You keep looking at him and never answering the question. I hate it when people single us out. I hate it when people like. We're gonna do that though. It's to be expected. You're right. We're different. But fuck them, right? Yep. Fuck. With a rubber duck. He's not manipulating me. I love him for him. He doesn't control me. We're a team. He supports me in everything I do and everything I want. He's he's my support system. I didn't think he was manipulating you. I thought you were probably working some kind of angle. I just ain't figured it out yet. But then I saw you in that bathtub and you look like you were having the time of your life. You're a member of the FUPA fandom, so I think this just might be your thing. Let me get a McCrispy Deluxe combo. Make it large. What do I think about his dire financial situation? I think it's scary. Yeah, what's so scary about it? Um, that he might lose it all in a day. He might just be homeless one day, but. So if I'm broke, if I go broke, okay? If we end up back on disability and it's me, you, and Chad living in some small apartment and we're eating McDonald's every day and that's treating ourselves. You're treating yourself every damn day I've seen so far. I don't, I, I think if the house is gone, she's probably peacing out. Because at that point, I don't know, she loses all the benefits of being with you. Like, there's no positive at that point. At least at this point, she gets, you know, to live there. I don't know what, what her situation was before. Maybe there's nothing, like, nefarious here. I just, I don't know, in my head, I can't see why somebody would, like, gravitate towards somebody that negative without it, that any kind of upside at all. You gonna be able to handle that? Yeah, you I guess it's that? me, you, Chad, eat McDonald's every day in our small, cute apartment. Because, I mean, I'm hopeful that people will go back to watching us on YouTube. I hope that people will be, I'm hopeful that people will, like, you know, I can go back to live streaming full time again and do, like, six hour live streams like every other streamer and, like, grind it out. But, I mean, there is a very real possibility that one day I won't be able to do that anymore. And we're gonna have to live off of whatever we can. Are you prepared for that? As long as I have you, that's all I need. Wishing his subs will come back. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with, the, like, wishing. But there's an old saying that, like, my grandma used to say with me. And I think it went, like, wish in one hand and shit in the other and see which fills up faster. Like, it just don't usually work out. Have you ever thought about the fact that she's just waiting you out and trying to take your 401k when you die? I'm out. I, I, I'm broke. 
You're broke. I'm broke, yeah. Four million subscribers. <laughs> Even if he does go broke and has to sell the house, I'm still going to be by his side. He's only... Honestly, even mentioning he was broke at a comedy show seems like a play for sympathy to me. The one that I love and I care about, and there's only one of them. And so I'm not just going to up and leave him for money. Because money's an issue. Because I love him, and just imagining a life without him is difficult. <laughs> I mean, my biggest fear is dying on her. If I die in the next two or three years on her, that's just going to ruin her life. I hope you don't die on her because she's not going to get out. But at the same time, this thing turned genuine at some point. Like, I didn't think there was any possible way. I don't think those were fake tears at all. I think she really, like, loves this dude. But how long can she take that kind of ne negativity? That's what I want to know. I really want you to understand how actually sick I am. Like, I don't know if you we get actually it. get it. But this is my health summary. This is everything that's currently wrong with me. My risk for stroke or heart attack is astronomical. I am essentially a walking time bomb. And I'm so fucking sorry for that. I really, really wish I had taken better care of my body. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so you would think if you knew like hey i was almost 600 pounds like all this is wrong with me i'm a walking what do you say stroke heart attack that he would stop like eating all the fast food and all the stuff and start trying to take better care of his body but no he's just gonna sit here and complain about all the stuff that's wrong because that would take way too much effort and probably save him a hell of a lot of money too so you can't do that he's got to go for broke go for the gusto I'll never be ready for it, but I know. <laughs> I don't want you to be alone. I don't want you to be alone. Okay. <laughs> and we trauma bond. I've talked to my therapist since me and her have been together about overcoming it. My therapist keeps telling me the same thing. When you learn to love yourself, all these things will fall into place. And we just got to teach you those skills. And... Then I turn to my doctor and I'm like, what do we do? He's like, you've had bypass surgery. You, you lost 200 pounds. What more can I do for you? I'm like, fit. Uh, 200 pounds if you were almost 600. Like, you could do that fairly easy. Like, eating junk, honestly, you could do that. But you're just going to put it all back on because you didn't change anything truly. You just couldn't eat for a while and now you can. I'm a little over two years out. I lost three pounds last week, and I can eat a hell of a lot more than I used to when I first started at this point. And you know what? I don't, because I've retaught myself the difference between full and stuffed, and I've taught myself to count my calories every single day. I journal it, and right now I'm between 1,000 and 1,200 calories a day again, because I dropped it back down because I wanted to kick my weight loss up faster. Fix it, dude. Help fix it. And then they're telling me that I'm the one that has to fix it. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And I'm making less and less every month, and I'm scared shitless. And now, making his way to the ring, Boogie Tonight! Hey, so Mike, I just got off the phone with Keemstar, and he has a boxing event coming up, and he's giving me a slot on the card. You got it! Damn, I made the Keemstar joke about the gnome and then he actually showed up. That's crazy. But him versus Wings, I watched it. It's not a good fight. This fight pays $10,000. No chance against me. Shut the fuck up. People are going to see me win this thing. This is where I turn it all around. Right here. Sheamus Dunn stops the contest and therefore your winner wings oh! it's crazy that he, they had to tape his like boxing trunks up in the middle of the match because they kept falling off 
or sliding down. What do you call it? His meat apron. And then wings didn't look at all that impressive either. I mean, granted, he was a lot better. Get me some more subs. I will box both of these guys at the same damn time. I guarantee I can take them. Watch the way he hits my head. My brain got shocked with each He barely touched you. It's ricocheting against my skull. So since you guys were here last, I did have a bit of a windfall, which bought me some time here in this house. Uh, the problem with that is I spent more than 10,000 getting that fight together. So by the time- Are you going to tell me that you had training meals or that is $2,000 on quesadillas? Jesus. I cannot see this guy spending that kind of money training, but you're just making a stupid financial decision and get rid of the damn Street Fighter games in the background. All that shit needs to go. Time all that was done, all I did was put that $10,000 back into savings. Being in the new relationship is great, but I mean, she can't help pay a $2,200 mortgage. Okay, let's go through my monthly bills for a second. My health insurance is 800. I have $500 worth of medical bills. I have $500 worth of utilities. I, I pay for doctor's visits, physical therapies, labs constantly. I still have to pay for the car that I drive. I still have to pay for car insurance. I still have to pay for health insurance. Diablo 4 came out, I had to buy it. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 came out, I had to buy it. Tears of the Kingdom came out, I had to buy it. That's Oh my God, you are drowning in debt and you had to buy these video games? Dude, you are a total asshat. There is no saving you. Like, I wanted to be nice during this, like give you some good motivational words or whatever, tell you to pick yourself up, you know, tough times don't last, tough people do, like you can turn it all around. But then you keep saying things that make me more and more mad. Like, you are just unsavable, dude. No one, there's no, nothing I could say that can motivate you anyway, because you're just so happy to be down there and looking up and saying, look at me down here, it's so low, like I just can't stand it. Nobody up there is going to keep looking down and keep saying, well, can you climb up here? They're not going to keep throwing you a rope. $400 for the video games right there. But if you take out all of it, you take it out, all I eat is sandwiches every day. All I do is sit here. I don't pay for any Netflix subscriptions. All I pay for is internet, utilities, medical bills, mortgage. If I pay for just that, I need $7,000 a month. I'm not making $7,000 a month and I have no clue how to do it. I mean, I think it's time to start hitting some of these sugar babies up and asking them if that uh, loan has matured yet and if they could send you some of that back because you are totally effed on that one. That's a lot of money to be needing to put out each month and only bringing in like 3K. I mean, maybe bankruptcy is his only like option at this point. Won the lottery. So there's something I've always wanted to try. There's a lot of research that came out of Europe and now we're doing it here in the United States where psychedelics can help reset certain brains. People who experience childhood abuse, people who've gone through trauma, people who deal with post-traumatic stress disorder. And I'm all of those. I, to be honest, I'm scared shitless. It's one of the only things I haven't tried yet. So let's give it a shot. No, why don't you try self-improvement? Because you really ain't tried that either. But I didn't think we were going to go on like a mushroom trip with some backwoods dude in Arkansas. Like you're going to go out here and get killed by Bubba. Something worse could happen to you in the damn woods sitting out here tripping balls. Because, I mean, all you really do is see trails, though. I don't know. One time I watched Anacondas and I thought I didn't see a single snake in the whole damn movie. But we're talking like microdosing, right? My given name is Ryan Arthur DeLeoyo, and I've adopted the name Flaming Star. 
There's one thing that's undeniable is that there's always this question about why, why am I here? Existence, what's really happening? Who am I? That's what happens when you seek out hallucinogenics. It's gonna allow everything else physically here to relax. The emotional stuff is gonna come out, trauma is gonna come out, but afterwards your atoms are gonna go back into their original positions. What did he call himself? Flaming Star? Cause I'm thinking that I'm gonna give him a nickname too. I'd like to call him Ryobi Reject. Like the cheapo like friggin' skill saws or whatever. That's why. He'll be mind, body, and spirit all one together. Ryobi? Oh, Ryobi? I believe when it. When you get to a certain point of understanding inside your intellect mind, that connectivity you realize your hands are basically playing like USB ports. So these are the, uh, it's crazy to think that something that just grows out of the ground has so much power and I'm actually holding in my hand right now. But here we go. Buddy, for a first time, if he's going to eat all those, that's probably a moonshot for him. He's going to be out of this damn world. They don't taste bad. Honestly, that doesn't taste too bad. They're pretty good and dry. Every, everybody just says kind of earthy. Stim and all. Oh, the whole thing, yeah, yeah. Okay. Also, that would have been the time to bring out the quesadilla. You just throw them in it, and it's easier to go down. Welcome to the club. It's been a while, though. May God bless you and be with you on your journey. Okay, so I think we've been about 20 minutes in. About 15, yeah. About 15. So we're about 15 minutes in, and I started to feel things are kind of wavy and kind of disconnected. It's kind of like my brain works on multiple channels, and like I have to pick and choose what I'm concentrating on. I have never been involved. I have no clue where the fuck I am or even who I am. I don't give a fuck. I recognize Oh, uh, He's about to experience the second part of the realization of letting go and we're gonna get to i mean because right now he reminds me of the kid in high school that you gave like nine non-alcoholic beer to and he sat there and go i'm friggin smashed like that's just what he's kind of doing to the other side of it i told you they'd come it's gonna get nice and bright in about five more minutes yeah and the reflection in the water is really cool too so what do you think was the first trauma that you experienced which, you had, which basically set up like a defense mechanism for you? Man, yeah, my parents are just crazy. They're broken people. Parents? Yeah. Stewards. People who are like trying to, to, to oh, okay, okay. Yep, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? What? Like, they don't, I mean, that shit doesn't matter. <laughs> what if Flaming Star decides to shoot, to like turn in the shooting star right now? Because no, ain't nobody gonna find you out here. It really doesn't matter. That was the dumbest shit. Oh, it happened so long ago. Like, I've just been waiting for the right time to just drop that shit. So, uh, when did you feel the need of this separate personality? Is that what, was that like what you used as a coping mechanism to socialize with? Well, that's exactly what it is, right? Like, I didn't know what the hell, I didn't know how to communicate what I was dealing with or what I was going through, and I just, Right. We put on these different faces in order to deal with situations in society. You try to give people what the hell they want. And then you felt like that was the need to make up Francis or other personalities? Yeah. Are you ready? This guy is less like, 
He's less prepared to be a therapist than I am, and I was a fifth grade peer mediator. I would not trust this guy with trying to help me work through anything. But I mean, he might be a great guy and all that, but I would not want to go to him for like mental health advice. They let or all me. that go? Yeah, please, man. Oh my God. This is the first time I've ever felt happiness. I wait, 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 what? Happiness. <laughs> this is the first time I felt it. So who to tell, man? It's all kind of bullshit. It's, all, bullshit? it's all bullshit. What? What? Just all the things I've been worried about. <laughs> Wait till your girlfriend watches this and hears that she never made you happy. Not a single time. Little scrub-a-dub-dub. -dub. Ain't no more ducky time for your little... Mm. Because you are the master of your own orchestra, man. It's a game, right? <laughs> Just let them go, So it's up man. to you to choose. Steven, are you... I thought my phone was off? going off. Hello? <laughs> He sounds like he got a lot of pressure, too. He might have got the other jet engine, because they gave me one. I think he got the other one. I'm still not sure I'm, like, really here yet. From the night before? I don't really want Mountain breakfast. Dew. That's just, that's a change. Jesus. Whew. Come on, guys. Let's go. It's just all bullshit. Like, none of this matters. None of it. It's all a construct. It's all a simulation. It's all a... It's a fucking video game. You know when you die? I think I died last night. I Physically, my body was fine, but I think I went back into the void we come from. And I think... Uh, I think I'm still in it, except I'm also in this physical corporal body, but I'm also the incorporeal being that puppets it and controls it, and God damn it, I feel like I'm in control. I feel like I'm in control of myself for the first fuck. Buddy, you were always in control of yourself, you just never took accountability. And now I get the feeling that you're going to say this for like a day. And then you'll just start this whole woe is me thing. I really hope it worked. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't care how many crazy, how much crazy stuff you said. I would never want somebody to be in a bad situation. Like, I would want somebody to improve their own life and, like, pick themselves back up. So I wish you would. But it just seems like you're going to say this and everything's great right now. But the second something doesn't go your way, it's just woe is me. Fucking time. The stuff that I, I normally worry about, like worrying about my finances, worrying about my internet, worrying about what people think about me, it's all so incredibly stupid. It's all just bullshit. I think I'm going to enjoy making YouTube videos again. I think I'm going to enjoy live streaming again. What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Boogie 298 coming at your live is good to the power. When I make a video, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 people watch. That is still my dream job. Everybody falls off. That's part of the deal. Every single month. He had tons and tons he, of You start off as a nobody, and for a short period of time, you're a somebody, and then that star burns out like every star does. I was lucky enough. And then Flaming Star gives you a bunch of mushrooms. But no, that's the wrong mentality. You were always a somebody. You were always you. You just somewhere along the way forgot that like you could do better for yourself you could want better for yourself you just sat there and you started wallowing in your own self-pity and a lot of people don't get away from that or don't get out of those situations it could have had a lot to do with your mental health but I, again i'm just gonna preach it i'm gonna say it the only hole you can't dig yourself out of is the grave and you're still speed running that the way you're eating after bariatric surgery like you could still try to turn it around but if you're eating three quesadillas at a time 
ordering all that food, you've already stretched your stomach back out, but you could still die it. Enough to get hit by lightning. I was lucky enough to get to live my dream. I was lucky enough to get to enjoy all of that, play this game the way I wanted to play it. I'll be gone one day too. But for one brief moment, we, we got an opportunity to shine really bright. And those are the videos I remember him from too. The Francis ones, that was probably like the first video I ever saw, or it was the Candy Crush one where his sister was yelling at him for spending $500 on her credit card or something. But I, I just think that this is a really good story, like to hear and to just be like a cautionary tale because so many people have everything in life and then at some point they just get down on themselves or they just forget to be grateful for the little things or they just uh, never cared about them in the first place or they always maybe secretly felt this way. But this guy really did have it all as far as YouTube goes and he had all the money, all this and that, but he started focusing on all the wrong things. I mean, $200,000 on some women on a sugar baby website, like that's just absolutely insane, dude. So I don't know if you can save your channel, but I know you can save yourself and you could absolutely work your way out of this hole that you've dug yourself into. And uh, I'm hoping the, to see something good come from you, but that's never going to happen just as long as you sit there and say, woe is me, the world is trying to beat me down. But all right, guys, leave a like, leave a comment. I'll see y'all later. Peace.